Welcome aboard the Omnibus to Miscellanea. I am Sabri and I will be your overseer today. Before we get started, I wanted to express my deepest gratitude to all of the writers and voice actors who helped to make this show possible. And to those of you who've been listening and sharing, I'd like to thank you too for being with us this far. If you're new, hi, welcome aboard. If you like what we do, please share with your friends and family. Words of mouth goes a long way in helping us reach a wider audience, especially all those who've worked on each episode. Additionally, we want to extend an invitation to join us on Patreon. Your subscription will not only provide us with the resources to continue creating the content you love, but it will also grant you access to exclusive perks like our first tier at $1 with a 7-day free trial, in which you're able to submit your stories for consideration. $5 tier, you get a shout-out, add free episodes, and sometimes vote on the next episode to release. We understand that not everyone is able to support us in this way. We appreciate all forms of support, whether it's through sharing our work or engaging with our content. Thank you for being an incredible part of our journey. With all that being said, our next stop, a story of long lost love. Is it supernatural or simply dwindling sanity? Written by SPN Superfan 1, She Knocks. I've been a detective for a long, long time probably longer than some of you have been alive. Working in this field of work, I've come across a lot of the gruesome, disturbing, and horrific things God's rejects have done to other innocent people. But in this case, I've never seen anything like it. I'm honestly at my wit's end here and don't know what to believe anymore, so I've turned here. I'm sure many of you are experts when it comes to this stuff, so I want your honest opinions on this one. For some context, a young woman, five foot three, blonde hair, blue eyes, was brought into the station disheveled and covered in blood and dust. Officers had picked her up after some neighbors called with some noise complaints. When they entered the residence, she was crouched on the ground next to the dead body of her fiance, writing in a journal. A bloody hammer laid on the ground next to her. Standard murder case, you crime junkies might be thinking, but it is so much more than that. And if my sergeant ever found out I stole police evidence and posted it to social media, I'd lose my job immediately. After taking this case though, I couldn't care less. I'm getting up there in age anyway, and this old fart would rather like to retire after this particular case. Anyway, I'll just let the evidence tell you. Below are entries from a leather-bound journal that was collected from the scene of the crime. The one the woman was writing in, it seems it was being used as some sort of diary slash dream journal. Entry number one, January 13th, 2023. Hello, journal. My name is Laura Lai Wilson, and my fiance George and I are gonna buy our first house together. I'm keeping this as a log of our journey from buying the house to renovating and hopefully to document building a nursery. Gosh, I feel like I'm 13 again writing in my diary about my latest boy crush. Spoiler alert, it's George. Honey, if you ever read this, I love you and I can't wait to take the next steps with you. Entry number two, January 24th, 2023. I'm happy to announce that after almost two weeks of looking on houses on Zillow and going to a few open houses and some other house tours, I think we finally found the one. 8374 Maplewood Drive only for 13000 I was surprised how cheap they were selling the place considering how beautiful the property is. Two story, four bedrooms, two bath with marvelous wood flooring. The outside interior is a nice pearl white with a blue door that makes it pop. My favorite is the stereotypical white picket fence, though. <laughs> There's also a study on the first floor, so I'm thinking of turning that into our office. Not only is the house itself beautiful, but it has this intense aura about it. Like it's drawing me in somehow. It's one of the reasons why it's my first choice at the moment. I think we're even going to put an offer later today. I wonder why the address seems so familiar to me, though. Entry 
Entry number three, January 31st, 2023. Okay, I'm even more excited about buying this house now. Not only did our offer get accepted, but after I did some research, I figured out why the house's address seems so familiar to me. Turns out this is the house where Harriet Yarnzevic mysteriously disappeared into thin air five years ago. Well, George and I remember watching the news updates on the case when it was first sensationalized. But eventually the case went cold and I guess everyone forgot about it. How sad. I hope she's okay if she's still alive. There was lots of controversy surrounding the case too. Nobody knew how a girl could just up and disappear like that. All her belongings, purse, phone, even shoes were still at the house. Police say there weren't any signs of forced entry or anything either. Harriet lived with three other housemates and they all were questioned, but none of them had a motive and they were at the house party that night with many corroborating witnesses. The house is just spick and span clean, just how the other roommates had left it. This case is so interesting, I might update my true crime blog and document living in this house. Lord knows I've been neglecting updating it. I've always loved things like this. And Nancy Drew was my role model as a little girl. Who knows? Maybe I'll find clues investigators missed and solve the mystery. Entry number four, February 3rd, 2023. It's moving day! George thinks he's quite funny. I had mentioned when we arrived in the moving truck how perfect the house looked, how it stood proud and strong on its foundations. He said it was morbid, then proceeded to ask why he was marrying me again. I gave him a good nudge in the shoulder for that last remark. He knows very well he likes the house just as much as I do, and finds its history interesting. Hell, he even co-signed the lease. Anyways, we're super excited about living here and super tired and exhausted from moving. On the plus side, we had pizza for dinner. Ate on the floor surrounded by boxes and everything. Can't wait for when we get internet and cable in a few days. Entry number five, February 4th, 2023. I've never been really good at sleeping in unfamiliar spaces. I think my body's still adjusting to the move and my residual excitement and giddiness doesn't help either. Man, I couldn't sleep a wink last night. Other than that, things have been fine. George got called into work today, so I stayed home and started unpacking. The kitchen feels more like a kitchen with dishes in the cabinet and a proper dining table. After a short nap, I'll go to the store and stock up on food. Entry number six, February 6th, 2023. George is mad at me. I might have snapped at him a little about the placement of the TV in the living room earlier. I get cranky when I'm tired and I haven't been sleeping the best at night. But it's okay because I'm mad at George, too. The other night I could have sworn I heard someone knocking. I couldn't pinpoint the location where it was coming from, but the small, quiet, and repetitive knocks were there. I'm a light sleeper, so I wasn't able to go back to sleep until the knocking ended around 4 in the morning. I brought it up to George in the morning, and since he's a heavy sleeper and he didn't hear anything, he doesn't believe me. Anyways... I finished setting up the study this morning. I saw a picture of Harriet and her roommate stuck between some bookshelves, so that was a cool find. She looked happy. There was a draft coming from somewhere in there, though. I'll have to fix it. And put that on my to-do list. Entry number seven, February 9th, 2023. Taking some advice from my friend Chelsea, I'm gonna start dream journaling. And this just so happens to be the only available journal I had. (laughs) I'm too tired to drive to the store and get another one. I've been able to get more sleep than I've had in the past few days, but not too much more. Every night until 4 a.m. I'm lying awake in my bed, eyes wide open as the knocks emanate through the house. George says he still hasn't heard anything, but I know they're there taunting me in their steady, continuous drum. Maybe one of these days and I'm not terrified, I'll go and find out where the knocks are coming from. But when I'm sleeping, I'm having these crazy and 
vivid dreams. I've never vividly dreamed before this, so the first time it happened last night, it felt super real. I can't quite remember where I was, but the space felt familiar. I remember feeling frantic, panicked, and scared. I had locked myself away somewhere, but I knew danger was right around the corner. Then all of the sudden, this giant shadowy silhouette appeared and it lunged at me with a weapon. I think it was a hammer, but I, I'm not sure. When it made contact with my head, I woke up and I was covered in sweat and daze. George woke up and comforted me when he saw the state I was in. I was a little less mad at him after that. Maybe these dreams are caused by my sleep exhaustion. If I'm not going to be getting much sleep, I might as well do something with that time. I've gone into a rabbit hole with the Yarncevic case, doing research for my blog. So Harriet had three other roommates, Joanne Harris, her brother David Harris, and another guy named Antonio Frump. Joanne and Antonio were an item, and Harriet knew them all because she was Joanne's good friend from college. A bunch of interviews from people that knew Harriet suspected that she and David were romantically involved and claimed David was responsible for her disappearance. According to police, though, his alibi checked out and there was no way he could have been there. There isn't an estimated time of disappearance either. She really just finished out of thin air. Since there was no other information about the case available online, I turned to social media. At some point, I had fallen asleep while scrolling, and I had the same vivid dream from the other night. This time, it was more intense. I could feel the hatred and the anger coming off the shadow figure. It was angry, determined, desperate. I could make out my surroundings now, and I realized why. It was so familiar. It was to study. Entry number 9, February 14th, 2023. This stream was different from the other one that's been playing on repeat the past few nights. It was like a movie. I think I've been digging too much into this case because it's affecting my mind. In the dream, I was Harriet. I was at a house party just chilling along with Joe and then her brother David entered the room. I think it was the first time I had seen him because it felt like my heart started racing and he looked cute, but unfamiliar. He was charming, funny, knew how to make me laugh. I had an overall good time. The dream ended after he handed me a red solo cup full of some liquor. After I woke up, I started digging through my notes. Surely enough, Joe and Harriet had met at a house party, but I didn't find anything about David being there. Oh, shit. I forgot it was Valentine's Day. George came home pissed while I was researching. He slammed the front door, threw a pretty bouquet of flowers at my feet, and then angrily grumbled up the stairs to our bedroom. I had accidentally stood him up. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to meet up with him for dinner after his shift ended. I was too busy digging through old notes that I didn't check my phone to see his text or calls. Losing all this sleep has made me super forgetful. Entry number 10, February 16th, 2023. Okay, either I'm fucking losing it or the knocking has started during the daytime too. It feels like whatever is in the walls is surrounding me, knocking 24 seven, trying to get out. My head is pounding. I begged George to believe me to call an exterminator to check for mice anything but he won't he hasn't been a home or awake so he hasn't heard the knocking even when I hear it he doesn't I wish so George would get over Valentine's Day and just help me he's made me sleep on the couch for the past few days researching and updating my blog is all that comforts me Entry number 11, February 18th, 2023. We had sex, so much sex. We fucked like bunnies. David and I, 
In my dreams, I mean. But he was so sweet and handsome, though. He takes me out on dates, plays with my hair. He's just a genuine guy. Joanne, my dear sweet Joanne, she's so supportive of our relationship and happy for me and her brother. It's like we're soulmates. Jeez, these dreams feel so real, like I'm actually her. Sometimes I like to think I'm Harriet. But the only thing that tethers me is the rumors of David and her being an item. There's no proof. David, Joanne, Antonio all deny them being in a relationship to the press and to the police. Fuck, I'm so horny. Maybe David and I can have a little fun later when he comes home from work. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Silly little me. I'm in George. Maybe I'm actually starting to lose my marbles. Entry number 13. February 19th, 2023. George has officially lost it. He's having me involuntarily committed all because he came home to a mess in the study today. So I might have had a dream where David showed me a notebook of poems he had written to Harriet. I woke up and remember seeing it somewhere in the study. After I didn't find it in the bookshelves, I kind of went haywire and tore up the office a little bit. But I swear I have seen that notebook before. I really do need to find the source of that draft. It's freezing in there. He says this was his last straw. I'm sleep deprived and delusional. Me. Delusional. He's the crazy one if he can't hear the incessant knocks that come from the fucking walls every day. Me? Crazy? Guess that's why he's sending me to the nut house. I'm seriously reconsidering our engagement. David would have made a much better husband than George anyway. I'm sneaking my journal in with me. Entry number 13, February 20th, 2023. David is an abusive asshole and I wish I never fell in love with him. The red flags were there the whole time. He was super possessive of me everywhere we went. He wouldn't let me talk to other boys and he accused me of cheating on him every other week. Now he's finally done it. He's hit me. I've turned into his personal punching bag these past few days. I'm scared and terrified of setting him off again, and Joe, she just stands by and lets it happen. I've begged her to help me, but she won't, claiming that he's her brother and she'd never do anything to ruin his reputation, some fucking friend. I started looking for other places to live. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna leave David once and for all. Entry number 14th, February 21st, 2023. I've been released from my 72-hour hold. They haven't found anything wrong with me. I just slept for most of the time. I feel much better now. My head isn't spinning anymore and I'm not tired. I think I slept for a good 20-ish hours in there. George is so happy to see me and I home. He had a nice long hug when he came to pick me up. I think things are going to get better from here on out. Entry number 15. February 22nd, 2023. It's so loud! The noise! Knock, 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 make it stop! Ever since I got back yesterday, it's been constant, non-stop knocking. I have a headache, and eventually I passed out due to the pain. David did it. He killed me. He found out I was planning on leaving him, and he freaked. I was gonna make my escape when they were at the house party. He somehow found out and left the party to come confront me. When he cornered me, he tried to rape me. 
I eventually got away and hid in the study. He smashed my phone so I couldn't call for help or do anything. He smashed the doorknob off with a hammer. When he realized I wouldn't go back to him, he killed me. Bashed my skull in with a hammer. You want to know the worst part? I was still alive when he stuffed me in that wall. I watched as he replaced the broken doorknob, screamed in horror as he moved the bookshelf in front of the small hole he created, and I cried and cried and I cried and cried, but no one heard me. Eventually, I just passed out for exhaustion and suffocation. I know where the banging is coming from. I have one of George's hammers, and I grabbed it from his tool bag. I'm headed for the study. Loudest in the study, and I'm just so over it. My head is pounding. I'm tired, exhausted. I just want to stop. The stairs. David came downstairs when he heard me smashing the bookcases in the study. He yelled at me, screamed. I was so scared he was going to hit me kill me again. I hate David. I hate him with a burning passion. Everything was crescendoing around me. The knocking was so loud it felt like my brain was trying to explode. David was screaming in my ear, grabbing me, trying to hurt me. I just wanted everything to stop. I wanted him to stop hurting me. I hit him in the head with my hammer. Then I hit him again and again until his brains turned to mush and I just had to laugh. Finally, got revenge on David. Did what that fucker did to me. He's quiet now. Quiet is good. And then I went back to hitting the wall. With every hit, the knocking diminished. Finally, it was quiet when the bookshelf was destroyed. It was peaceful. There was a small hole in the wall that was hidden behind the bookshelf. I found her. I found Harriet. There's flashing red <clears throat> and blue lights outside. Good. They'll be able to help. I really don't know if this journal will be enough evidence to convict David Harris for the murder of Harriet Yarnsebeck. These are more like the ramblings of a madwoman than a credible confession. I don't know if the prosecution will see this as admissible in court. As for Lorelai Wilson, she's being charged for the murder of her fiancé George Finch. They found him with his head bashed in, brain matter and skull fragments everywhere. Poor guy, they found Lorelai scribbling in the journal when they entered the scene. In the wall, they found the skeletal remains of Miss Yarnzevic. Her skull had been bashed in. It appears her assailant killed her, moved the bookshelf, and created a makeshift grave in the wall where they stuffed her body and moved the bookshelf back. I have no clue how investigators didn't smell the decomposition or notice that the bookshelf had been moved, but the tenants quickly moved out after the girl's disappearance, and the house has left vacant for five years. Nobody complained of a rotting smell in that time. Again, I really don't know what to believe here. It seems like Miss Yarnsevic's ghost haunted Miss Wilson and drove her insane until she discovered her remains. But that's crazy, right? Ghosts don't exist. Anyway, I better finish up here. It seems like someone is knocking at my door. She Knocks was written by Reddit user SPN Superfan1. Make sure to check out their two more story, I Am Emily, over on their Reddit. Lorelai was played by Megan Poole, whose Instagram handle is at Meg underscore underscore music. This episode was composed by Alex Tozian, whose Instagram is at Alex Tozian Works. The editor was Cy Nelson, who can be found on Reddit at Cy underscore Cyclone. Or on Instagram at cyber underscore cyclone. The producers for this episode were Cy Nelson and Teddy B.B. Bear.
whose Instagram is TDY underscore BB Bear. All links and cards can be found in the description. As for our bus, you can always find a stop on the corner between somewhere and nowhere. Next episode releases March 11th. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. Stay cozy. We hope to see you soon.